Necessity is the mother of all invention. This seems fairly logical, the statement, this phrase, the saying, because it makes sense. Think about it. You're in a difficult situation, and the difficult situation forces you to come up with ideas, maybe invent something that will help you deal with that situation. And to the extent that you fail, well, you might not survive, particularly in any pre-modern environment. And to the extent that you succeed, those tools will allow you to survive and possibly propagate your DNA. That is the basis, the fundamental basis of that statement. But what a lot of people don't get, I think, is that almost equally, you could make the claim that necessity is the mother of all cooperation, which is to say, when the stakes are high, when it matters, people are much more inclined to cooperate. For example, you can read about and hear about stories in America in the 18th century on the frontier before a lot of the states or territories had been settled and the amount of cooperation that went into defending and maintaining settlements was enormous. And many people had to participate and pull their weight. And if you didn't do so, you weren't wanted. But the necessity of that forced people to cooperate and do what they had to do. It's one example of countless potential examples. The cooperation emerged as a consequence of the harshness and difficulty of the situation they found themselves in. But when we look at the modern world, by way of contrast, it's very easy to realize that none of that exists. Of course, there are challenges that scientists and smart people are trying to surmount and overcome, but that's not the same thing as a fundamental survival issue for the most part. And let's be honest, most of us couldn't survive on our own. We're not survivalists. I'm sure some people are, but most of us couldn't. But the cooperative aspect is the one I want to examine here because it really tracks across all layers of society. Sure, people still cooperate in joint projects. They try to do things. And the one instance where you will see overt cooperation because necessity demands it is in the paid work environment. Everyone wants to get paid. And so they're willing to put up with a lot of BS if need be. They're willing to organize in a certain way and they're willing to cooperate with each other whether they like each other or not. Now, of course, there's a flip side to that and it goes for both cooperating and not cooperating and abundance in the sense that in former times when things were a lot more resource scarce, there was a much greater likelihood of conflict, violent, armed conflict, with many people possibly losing their lives in the process. And that likewise is applicable to modern society in the sense that there's much less violent conflict, at least in Western civilized countries, than there used to be, in part because people don't have to fight for resources. But what happens is that people fail to recognize that there are other types of resources. In a sense, social media, attention media, right? Attention is a kind of currency. It's a kind of resource. Women in particular are like that. But all people want attention if they're going to be on social media for a variety of reasons, income, presence, whatever. And so we have a new sense of resources that never existed before that people are fighting over. And you would think, though, logically, given how easy it is to live in the modern world, that we would be more likely to cooperate. But no, cooperation is born of the exigencies of the environment and the difficulties that environment thrusts upon you as an individual and as groups. And frankly speaking, none of that exists in the modern world. Now, we see this most overtly in the political realm and the social media realm, obviously. But it goes well beyond that. And so we can look at the fundamental bedrock, the underlying reality of an institution such as marriage. Well, there's a cultural aspect, and traditionally there was a religious aspect. But beyond that, the necessity of reproduction 
and the cooperation that is forced upon men and women in that process was something that was largely unavoidable. What happens now in the modern marriage? With not just no-fault divorce, but whether or not you want to get married in the first place. If you go back several decades, you were very kooky and weird if you didn't get married. Now people just shrug their shoulders. On every layer of civilization as we know it, the former necessity to cooperate has disintegrated into almost nothing. And that is leading to all these minor squabbles and disagreements, but also to the massive large-scale divisions we can see as a result of, for example, the anti-pestilence elixir. Some people are very much pro-anti-pestilence elixir. Other people are very much anti. And because the stakes aren't very high, in this case, this is a perfect example, right? People are free to have a more variable opinion or view on it. But let's imagine, in terms of necessity, because that's the term we need to focus on, that we were visited by a new pestilence. And as this pestilence befell us, we ascertained that it didn't just lay waste to less than 1% of the population, but in fact had a mortality, a fatality rate of 40%. People would probably be terrified. And on top of that, if there were visual cues, as they were back in the day regarding, for example, the great pestilence in Europe, the Black Death, then people would be even more motivated. But in some relative sense, you know, it's always relative compared to the plagues of the past and compared to things in general, the current pestilence is not nearly as bad as it could have been, and therefore people are much more divided on the issue. They would be much less divided if this plague had a much, much higher degree of virulence and there would be much more consensus. And this is one of the things that, frankly speaking, people weren't prepared for. Nobody planned this out as nobody formally planned out the erection of civilization as we know it. It just happened and we now find ourselves in this camp of what you could argue is a form of extreme voluntarism, but this extreme voluntarism leads to divisions because people have choices about what they can believe, how they exercise those beliefs, and what they can do and what they can't do. And this is why when people try to propose solutions, I often look at these solutions with a deep skepticism because I think so much of what goes on in modern or hypermodern society is a consequence of just that, living in a hyper-modern society. And to get different results, the environment would have to be different. Human beings are always going to react in a certain way to an environment. And these self-same people are very disappointed when I propose or suggest that we could bomb ourselves back a few hundred years, and then, almost if it were magic, many of the old traditions and customs would naturally kick in because necessity would force people to cooperate, as well as innovate. That is, necessity is both the mother of all invention, but necessity is also the mother of all cooperation. Anyway, as always, thank you for tuning in. Please hit the like button, subscribe if you're not yet a subscriber, hit that bell icon to be informed of my videos. And if I'm still alive, I'll check you out later. As always, may the gods watch over you. Take care. Bye-bye. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, please consider making a donation or becoming a patron. Thanks for watching.